Welcome to episode four, if you can believe that, of Growing Your Successful Business. Uh, we're trying something a little different here today. We're going to do like a little 30-second tester buffer kind of thing. So I'm going to filibuster for a few seconds here. And uh, thank you, Doug Hudak from BAM Design for joining me. This is going to be a lot of fun. If you don't know Doug, uh, Doug has got a gregarious personality, I would say. And, Ooh, and yeah, that's you like that? five-point word Isn't right it? there. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, Doug's a lot of fun and a uh, super smart guy, and we're damn lucky to have him with us. Um, so, yeah, again, thanks for listening. I hope you guys all had a great Easter weekend. And uh, um, thank you for all of, uh, the feedback you guys have given me. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of education, learning new technologies, and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, lots of you have written and said things you like, and a couple people said things they don't like, but I kind of ignore those. <laughs> um, but, hey, one of the things I want to point out is uh, the whole point of this thing is to, to be free for entrepreneurs and business owners and managers to learn um, from others' mistakes in many cases and learn kind of the pitfalls of running a business uh, that others have experienced. And so don't be afraid to share this with your friends and family and coworkers and things like that. The, the, better, the bigger the audience is, the more likely we are to get sponsors and keep this thing free for everybody. Uh, I'll remind you that my contact information it, it can be found on growingyoursuccessfulbusiness.com or brianlharding.com. All the links to, uh, to Facebook and YouTube can be found there. You can shoot me an email at brian at brianlharding.com. If you have ideas for the show, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, um, that'd be a lot of fun for, for you guys if you want to come on. Uh, we tend to have a lot of fun here. This isn't super serious, I, th I don't think. Um, this particular podcast is brought to you by the South Sound Small Business Summit. Uh, we're super happy to have them uh, sponsor this for us. It is the business event in the South Sound to educate and inspire business leaders, managers, and entrepreneurs to make the most of their business. Uh, this year it is Friday, May 3rd at the Star Center in Tacoma, 8 a.m. to noon. This year they have some awesome speakers. They have Margot Myers from Margot Myers Communications. She's going to talk about how to influence the conversation. What do people say about you when they leave the room? Uh, Doug, we'll, we'll skip that for you because you probably don't want to hear that. <laughs> Travis Daigal, uh, character development coach, talking about failing forward. And Brian Reynolds, owner of Anthem, Anthem Coffee and Wine Bar, building a healthy team culture through heroic hospitality. Get your tickets at southsoundbusinesssummit.com. Again, that's the small sound, I'm sorry, South Sound Small Business Summit, May 3rd, Star Center, Tacoma, 8 a.m. to noon, southsoundbusinesssummit.com. So, again, as I mentioned, we have today with us Doug Hudak from BAM, BAM. Design. Not only is it super fun to say, but BAM stands for Branding, Advertising, and Marketing. You've been doing your homework. I have. Nice. I spent I spent a lot of time on uh, uh, BAMDesignCo.com <laughs> last night. Uh, so, Doug, why don't you, I, I know you, but obviously our audience maybe not. So, uh, why don't you tell us all about yourself? Mm, are we going in the way back machine? Huh, well, we only have an hour, so um, we'll go way back as you think makes sense, I guess. Okay. So, if I squirrel, you'll you'll reel me in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, one tap on the leg means stop, but <laughs> okay. one just means I like you. <laughs> yeah, you finally took your hand off my leg, so <laughs> right. we can get started. Um, ever since I was a little kid, um, I've loved to be creative. I mean, you you put a crayon in, and you know, it, I was thinking about this today. It's like, how does that even get started? You know, you put a crayon in a kid's hand, and they either break it, eat it, throw it. Or they draw. I was an eat it kid. Yeah, I ate it first, and then I realized it was really waxy. So I <laughs> thought, you know, let's put some on paper. Right. But no, I was always drawing. Always had a sketchbook. Always, you know, playing with play doh. You could put me at the kitchen table with play doh, and I'd be there for hours. And you know, so cheap babysitting. Loved every aspect of art um, through school. I took every art class, you know, because. I enjoyed it, and I could get good grades. It would, you know, balance out English and history and those. Right. Where all I did was draw on the desk. <laughs> um, I, um, so I, I, I pursued art all along. I was distracted along the way with different jobs, but always came back to something creative. So uh, let's see. I, uh, I was in corporate world for years, um, doing design, advertising, and um, then 2008 came along. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. The, and, the year that changed many people's life trajectories. Yep, yep. <laughs> At least our generations. I was... Well, uh, my generation, way younger than yours <laughs> generation, but... I was, I was forced to find something new and um, ended up 
teaming up with some other guys and, and opening up a marketing business downtown Tacoma, which didn't really work out that well, but I learned a lot about business and enough to start my own business. Gotcha. So I've been in design for over 25 years. Okay. And you had you started your business when? Three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Same time I started Ignite You. Nice. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. So um, when folks think about branding and marketing and advertising, three monumental undertakings each in and of themselves, um, what do you wish people knew before they even reached out to somebody like you? I mean, so, so just to clarify for folks listening, you're a guy who creates logos, uh, creates banners, that kinds of things. Um, you're not an SEO guy, right? Correct. You don't do, I'm a designer. You're a designer, right. Okay. So when we say marketing, advertising, branding, we're talking we're, the visual images specifically. Yes, for those things. Okay. So not so much uh, language that goes along with those, just here's your image, here's the target, target, and this is you, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So when people are looking at creating a an, an image or an icon that would represent them, what do you wish that they would do or know before they even pick up the phone and call you? So the absolute worst scenario for me would be someone who says, I want you to create me something, and I have no idea what I want, but I'll know it when I see it. <laughs> right. Which, by the way, for most of us who are not creative crayon <laughs> drawing people in our, into our 40s and maybe 50s for you now, I don't know, um, that's that's kind of the norm for us. Right? We, we know what we like when we see it, but to sit down and pencil out, if we could do it ourselves, why would we call you, right? <laughs> well, but... Um... That would be the most expensive way to go <laughs> okay. for a customer. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Because uh, that's going to take a lot of time and a lot of, how's this? How's this? How's right. this? So what someone can do is a little bit of research on their own. If they can come to me with at least some examples of what they like, it's like, I saw this logo or I saw this advertisement. You know, I like this about this or this about this. Right. But... I mean, another thing that I do that kind of keeps that from happening is a sit down. If I have a sit down with you and we talk and we just talk about your business and who your target audience is and, you know, the demographic and, and all this stuff, out of the conversation, I can usually get enough information that I have an idea already in my head that I'm pretty sure you will like. Right. But if I'm, if you know, eight times out of ten, it, I'm pretty pretty close. Um, and it doesn't take a whole lot to steer it in the right direction, you know, chisel it down to, to a sure. masterpiece. Gotcha. So um, folks need to then, you know, take a few minutes and kind of just look around and see what they've seen that they like. Um, stay away from things that clearly obviously they don't like. What about colors and, and all I can't? Well, we get more of that stuff later on. Um when they're when you're picking an image, um, one of the things, especially now with technology the way it is, if you want to use Apple, you know, for anything online versus Google versus YouTube versus Facebook, um, each one has their own requirements for format size and shape and all that kind of stuff. Uh, for somebody just starting out nowadays, um, what would you what what would you recommend they do to kind of figure that whole realm out? That can be tough um, because if you have a logo that is long, you know, mm -hmm. it's not a circle or a square, you know, but it's a longer logo, it's not going to really fit in, you know, like a Facebook circle image that you need. Right. So that's where you might need someone to to alter your logo a little bit, you know, stack it instead of making it long landscape or take a piece of your logo and isolate it and make it so that it can fit. So it might not, you know, it depends on your logo, um, what you're going to do, but you know, you're talking about different, um, file types, right? You know, and you could go down the PNG, the TIFF, the JPEG, the, you know, EPS, all that stuff. You just lost half the audience, by the way. <laughs> Nerd so, out. Uh, yeah, stuff. so a, a, a PNG, a TIFF, a what? A JPEG, an EPS, you got okay. Vector right. and Raster. And, yeah, yeah okay, anyway, yeah. but usually a JPEG. You can See get... you all next week. 
what do those things mean? What, what's what's a JPEG versus an IPEG and and uh, all that kind of stuff? Did you say an IPEG? Yeah. We just came up with a new file format. That's right. You're gonna make millions. I'm gonna make billions. <laughs> The main thing is uh, vector versus raster, and that's like a photo versus a piece of art. Okay. Um, but this this gets down to more of um, printing, you know, instead of digital. Digital, you're fine with a JPEG or um, a PNG. Okay. You know, raster, though, or the, uh, the vector logos, that's where if you want to blow it up and put it on a side of a van or something <clears throat> then you're going to need a vector logo okay because otherwise it's going to you blow it up and it's going to be all grainy pixely and grainy yeah. okay yeah. gotcha yeah. okay so it won't look good so you need to pick a file that's universally good for print and it's great digital. if you have if you have both if you have a vector you can go do anything with it you can okay. change it into okay so the one thing they need to hear then is vector. get a vector file and you're good yeah what's a vector vector <laughs> <laughs> go to airplane <laughs> right 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 <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about rebranding a little bit. Uh, you know, everyone went through the nightmare of 2008 through 2013-ish or whatever. We've all kind of seems to have come out of that. Um, everybody's busy. Everybody's making money. And it seems like everybody wants to buy a new shiny thing, and their logo is the new shiny thing that they all want to buy, right? Mm -hmm. are, you, are you experiencing that? Oh, yeah. So um, it seems like, you know, there's – with anything in business, there's two schools of thought. One is – you have your logo, um, you know, the McDonald's arches haven't changed in 64 years probably. The Target Target hasn't changed in 30 years probably. Um, why should mom and pop brand X widget manufacturing or selling company decide now is a good time to change their logo? Um, this, is, this is awesome because I actually did a presentation on this once. And um, if you look at like Starbucks mm -hmm. and Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. I mean, there's like 20, 20 iterations of their logo. Okay. So they, big companies that have changed their logo, and I don't think it's changed their success at all. Right. Um, but why should you? Why shouldn't you? Uh, you know, if you if you have a target as your logo, it's not going to change a whole lot. But if there's something a little more um, detailed to it, you know, you might might change it. And I have rebranded several companies, and I actually like the idea of doing that. Because um, one was kind of the 70s look, and they really needed an update to their logo. Bring okay. them, you know, bring them into this century at least. Right. And, um, and then there's, it's, you know, I've, I've rebranded companies that have been in, your, you know, business for 10 years, in 20 years. You know, it's just when it's time. A lot of people freak out because they're like, oh, no, then I have to update all my materials right you know and it's, it's going to cost me millions to rewrap you know? vans and print new cards and brochures and yep. buy new trade show things and all that stuff's expensive sure that has to be kept in mind but um i i companies that i've done have done it in in phases it's like okay you know right now we're just going to put it on the website and we're going to start phasing out our old stuff and phasing in the new stuff and it doesn't seem to be a problem so the idea with rebranding is then you're looking to capture a next generation of potential buyers. Yeah, that's really what we're trying to do. So we're not we're not looking to change for our existing customer base anything. Generally speaking, we're looking to capture the attention of folks that are now 20 years younger or something. Yeah, and being fresh and new and up to date and yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, if, when doing that, what what advice <coughs> other than uh, uh, I, I, I suppose with most that kind of stuff you're taking you're starting with something and you're kind of just cleaning it up or sharpening it or you're not generally just creating something brand new are you well there's some of both um like sometimes i mean you want to try to keep some bit of similarity to the old logo so that it's not a drastic oh it's a wholly you know different company right you know uh whether it's the shape the colors you know you're just kind of updating whether you know the fonts it's it can be very simple it can be um sharp edges going to rounded edges you know right little simple stuff but it's it's a noticeable change gotcha so i'll tell you a quick story i don't know if i ever told you this before but uh in our company uh the plumbing and drain company when we first started out uh eight years ago 
um, our, <laughs> our idea was <clears throat> to make sure we stood out. <clears throat> and so our, our method of making sure we stood out was we were going to have construction cone orange on everything. Our trucks were going to be that color. Our business cards were that color. Our pamphlets were orange and black. And uh, <laughs> it, it stood out. There's no question. <laughs> uh, and when we first started handing out our business cards, uh, um, I, think in, I think our record was three times in a day of somebody saying, these are the ugliest business cards I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> But uh, uh, so we never actually got as far as painting a van or wrapping it in the orange. They were just they were just white to start. Um, and the logo, because again we started out in 2011, and we we're, we were a new plumbing company, and we were trying to we were trying to look like we'd been around for a hundred years. Yep. So one of the reasons we we're the plumbing and drain company is because that that name just sounded like it was really old. Like you were the first guy in 1914 to be a plumber, and what would you call yourself? Well, we're the plumbing company, right? Um, <laughs> So that that was part of it. But our logo, um, and I have to take all the blame for this. Um, what again? I was trying to think of something. Okay, well, what was what was you know 100 years ago? What were people infatuated with? And for some reason, movie theater stuck in my head. And so our logo, what was intended to look like an old timey movie ticket. <laughs> oh. So which now I look at it, it looks like a modern raffle ticket. <laughs> <laughs> the shape with the with the corners and the, it just whatever. Um, so it wasn't very many months in when we realized that that I was not a marketing and design genius and we had to get some professional help. Um, and we sent our stuff off. Uh, so there are times where you just need to start from square one. And <laughs> in our, our case was certainly one of those where the logo we have now is nothing like it was then. Obviously, we have very northwesty colors and all that kind of stuff. Um, so anyhow, but are, are you able to coach people through that and say, hey, this looks like a train wreck. You've got to just – or do you just stay away from them because you don't want to hurt their feelings and you're, you're telling them their baby is ugly if you, if you do that kind of thing? Again, both. Yeah, okay. Um, but yes, I, I, do, I do coach people. Um, it's, it, you know, and of course, you're going to get all kinds of feedback from that. There's some customers that just have a vision in their head, and that's – that's where they want you to go. You can try to coax them a direction, but they're like, "Nope, I want, I want this." Right. And you know, and and that at that point, you know, I, it's a bummer because I'm just getting paid. Then I'm not doing really what I should be doing. I'm right. just creating what's in their head. Right. And, and whether it's good or bad for them, you know, I don't know. So, so you, I so do you, try. You do the best you can, but you're limited by how much input they'll take. And you know, you know, initially they're writing the check, and so it's like, okay, yeah, well, okay, yeah. If you want orange, then orange it is. <laughs> Here's your orange <laughs> raffle ticket. That's right, exactly. <laughs> so let's talk about colors. So um, uh, I went. I worked for uh, a very large national company who went through a rebranding process, and then moved to a different company the next year who also went through a rebranding process. These are all over a decade ago now. Um, the first company said, and they, and these all have very expensive marketing firms that they hire that are, you know, theoretically smart about this kind of thing. And they were both hung up on the color, on colors. The first company said, you absolutely have to use blue. It can't be red. And so they rebranded it, and all their trucks are blue. The next company said, it absolutely has to be red. You can't use blue. And they rebranded every one of their trucks in red. Is is this all just BS? Are they all just – are they just marketing folks who are, you know, they're – trying to hammer checks for millions of dollars by saying that they're experts on <laughs> how the human psyche reacts to colors, or is there really something to that? There's something to it, but I don't get hung up on it because, yeah, I mean, you can, there's color theory for everything. I mean, you you know, what you should use in restaurants, you know, what makes you hungry, what makes you anxious, what makes you <clears throat> passionate, you know, there's all kinds of colors you can use, but, you know, if it's said that, pink is supposed to be the best color for you you're going to have your pink you know plumbing and draining company logo i don't know it just might it, it could work great you never know you, you know it could be the the best thing in the world but you have to feel good about it um and i when i go about doing a logo for someone i do the research and see what's being done already you know, internationally, and then locally, who their competition is. And then I want them to stand out and be recognizable, but not, you know, blah, in your face. 
Right. You know, like you just threw up something on the, you know, and gave it to them. So there's there's a whole lot in there. Where... <laughs> You're laughing at your throwing up joke? Is that what's going on? I'm laughing because you were smiling at me about my throwing up <laughs> okay, joke. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> Yeah, recognizable just, yes <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah so i want you to i want you to stand out within your competition right if that makes sense sure sure okay so other than people walking into your office and saying i don't have any idea what i want i don't have any idea what color it is i don't know if i want round edges or sharp edges or if i want a vector file or a jpeg file short of them doing that what else can people do that just makes your job really impossible or is that pretty much it? Oh, that, may, that makes it impossible? Yeah, I mean, so other than not wanting to listen to you coach them up on your logo's a train wreck, we got to scrap it and start over, or, you know. Well, uh, the biggest thing is non-response. Right. Because, you know, I and, and, and I do, I get that a lot. Yeah. And it's like, it just it just brings everything to a halt, you know. I, I like to keep moving and get yeah. things rolling and get things done for people. Right. Um, so It's amazing how many businesses stay in business without... <laughs> Communicating without answering the phone, without or, answering the phone, the voice calling back. Full. I, <laughs> I, I could do three hours on just experiences I have had in the last month, probably, of companies that I, I, I literally leave their parking lot and I go, "How the hell are you still in business?" I, I, anyhow, I don't want to get sidetracked on that. So, so not responding is a problem. Not responding. Um, not like I said, being so tunnel vision that you don't take any advice from someone who's been around for a while right you know and they're just like nope this is the way i want it because you know somebody might know a little something right and then um you know having no idea having no idea at all what they want you know do a little bit of research at least have some kind of guidance this is what i like this is what i don't like gotcha okay you know, somewhere in the so i see you've got a page full of notes there uh why don't you take us through some of your examples of uh um Success stories or not so success stories, and uh, let's see where that takes us. Oh wow! Okay, I got I'll, I pregnant all, pause here. All, I know I have all <laughs> kinds of stuff on here. Cool, Man. let's hear it. Hmm. Okay, so achievements. We're gonna go way back. This was uh, and this you know this could go into like what shapes a person into a creative. Right. Well. I won first place in my grade school pumpkin carving contest. Wow. I won a transistor radio. You were 23, radio. but oh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you were there to see your five-year-old, but <laughs> you won the contest nonetheless, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what grade were you in when this happened? I think I was in third grade. Okay, yeah. cool. But, it, cool. you know, but it was like a, a positive reinforcement. You yeah, know? yeah. So, and then, you know, going into uh, school, some, I was, I was, I'd been like a freelancer Ever since I was young, I was hired first when I was in sixth grade to illustrate the high school chemistry lab book. Okay. Um, and I was paid with a calculator. You know, so okay, so I got a transistor radio and a calculator now. That's right. pretty good. Um, then when I was about thirteen, I was hired to paint. You know, it's funny because people find out you're creative; they just right. want to use you. Mm -hmm. I was hired to paint a four by eight plywood sign for an auto shop you know okay and so there i was hired again and then when i got a little older um i did some marketing pieces for famous amos okay wow remember nice. the cookie yeah. yeah yeah they're still around and um, amos is not but the cookies are <laughs> then i was i worked for the sheraton hotel downtown here i was when when they first opened up and they you know i was a waiter but they found out that I was creative and they had me do some marketing pieces for their get crabby at the Sheraton hotel. And, nice. you know, it just kind of goes on and on and on. Um, what were some of the, f Oh, Oh yeah. So that, you know, the ones that you're not so proud of, I was hired to help illustrate a dirty joke book when I was <laughs> in my early twenties, you know, when you need the money, you need <laughs> at least it wasn't like the cover of a porn magazine or something like that. It was just a dirty joke book. Right, right. right. There are illustrations. They're cute. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you have any of those left? I have one. You, ha you I have, have to have saved them. Of I course you did. One. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thumbed through it the other day. I was like, That's oh. That's funny. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but then, like, I moved to Hawaii when I was in my early 20s, and I, I was working in a, a restaurant. Mm -hmm. But, again, people found out you're creative. And I was... Um, 
so I had my, my parents, they gave me an airbrush and a compressor for graduation, high school, I had them ship it over. And so I'm painting logos on river boats, tree trimming trunk trucks, and uh, on the retail clothing walls, you know, of stores. Right. You know, and I'm, I'm just a waiter and, you know, but I'm doing this stuff for side money. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. How about uh, and and for those listening, I I did ask you know one of the hardest things of having uh, somebody on here is getting them to brag about themselves a little bit. I didn't realize you'd go back to third grade, but I'm, I'm glad that you <laughs> took me seriously when I said, "Please come in and brag yourself." Because one of the things that uh, for for folks who come on, they're giving advice to to the audience, and the audience can oftentimes find themselves saying, "Well, what the heck does this person know about it?" Uh, and so I do ask folks to to come in and and share some accolades they've won or awards or whatever. Um, that way you know that they're not just uh, um, people I picked up off the side of the street <laughs> panhandling and then asking them to come in and talk about legal and banking and marketing and stuff like that. So <laughs> there is a method to my madness here anyway. Um, how about some successes with businesses you worked with? Do you have any examples of that, of, uh, of folks that just you just nailed it and they nailed it and live happily ever after, that kind of thing? Yeah. Um, that's That's – that is one of the logos that I worked on, and it it's a it's a nice pat on the back for me. Um, it was a, a company that the sons took over from their dads, right? So it was actually from like the '60s, '70s, um, and they hadn't updated their marketing materials. And so I had known one of the owners for quite some time, and I, you know, like you're talking about, I'm. I'm I'm seeing the business card and I just kind of cringe every time I see it, you know, <laughs> and you know, the, the whole thing is like, you want to be nice, but it's like, Hey, Hey, is it okay if I, you know, just kind of take a stab at, at your logo? Right. And, and he said, yeah, well, you know, be my guest, but I've had several designers do that and we haven't liked anything they've done. Right. And so I'm like, okay, you know, no, no problem. And, uh, so I thought, okay, I'll give this thing a whirl. And, you know, I'm already like, oh, great. Um, but I, I come up with this logo, and, and, I'm, and I'm thinking, you know, it's an investment company. I think, okay, it's kind of corporate, kind of, you know, real professional. And and I come up with this icon, this logo for them, and I send it over, you know, and I'm just like, eh, you know, kind of, oh, shoot, what's going to happen? And I get the email back, and he's like, dude, you nailed it. Wow. And I was just like, yeah nice (laughs) this is awesome and so um so then you know so then they wanted business cards and they wanted you know some marketing materials and they want you know all the kind of stuff is like okay so this is this is awesome so yeah um i did another one where i started working for a company and they as a as a designer um and they just they didn't want to do anything with their logo i i kind of actually they needed something done with their logo, but, you know, I gave them some suggestions. They're like, no, we're not ready for that yet. And so we kind of did some marketing materials for them with their existing logo. And then finally they, they came, it came time and they're like, I think we're ready to make a change. And so they wanted, you know, something fortune 500 looking. And so there was a lot of research that went into that. And again, it was sticking to something that was close to what they had, but really improving it right and we went through several iterations and nothing was quite clicking and 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 this is one of those things where you know if you don't get it on the first try or second or third or fourth sometimes you got to sleep on it right you know and or come back to it in a week and it was one of those things where i had an idea much later and I and I laid it up and sent it and they're like, Yeah, this is it. This is the nice. one. And so then again, you know, now it's been used on advertisements, uh, marketing materials, trade shows, all kinds of stuff. Cool. One of the things we learned after getting the logo we like, um, was it when you go to use it in different uh places, for instance you wanna buy pens or you wanna buy a uh, pen's not a really good example, but you want to buy um, trade show tchotchkes, whether it be, you know, stainless steel insulated soup bowls or uh, plastic salad containers or whatever. Um, our logo has six colors. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't get six colors printed on those things. Oftentimes, you can only get black and white. And so um, 
our logo does not look good black and white. Uh, so we do by default, we just put our name on there. Uh, is that something that you're able to, to work with or it's just, hey, that's just the way the world is and, you know, use color when you can, but, you know, just understand that you're limited on, on using different kinds of marketing materials when you have those multicolored logos? Uh, no, actually a logo should be able to be, uh, be used in black and white. And that should, should be like one of the options when they create your logo to mm -hmm. show you, this is what it would look like in black and white. Okay. And I think yours could actually just take a, do a little couple tweaks, take out some of the gradients and I think you could actually make it. So it would what's work a gradient? Like, that's where the, the color fades from this lavender to purple. It's, okay. It's a gradient. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I see that now. <laughs> um, so yeah, you, I think we could alter it so so that it would work. Gotcha. So okay. you know, hey, contact me after the show. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> See what I can do. Um, okay. What other uh, success stories do you have? Or for by the way, the the people you've just mentioned, the the sons taking over for the father and and this other firm, um, they're all really happy. What was it that you did that made them happy? You just you just stole their you know the idea that they couldn't uh, articulate out of their brain and nailed it, or was it? You changed the colors, or you just sharpened it up. Or what what was it that made them so excited? It was, you know, a little of all those things. You create something that really represents them, and that they're proud to say is this this is you know my company, right. and it's like, you know, and and you. That's what really drives me is when people get excited about something I create, and they're excited to show that off right so it's like wow this really represents me well this shows me as a professional this shows me as like i've been around for years right kind of a thing gotcha and you know i i'm i i did an advertisement for somebody who they got it back and they're like oh my gosh i love this why did i wait so long you know they don't realize how good they can look right. until they see it right you gotcha. know is are there any companies that are industries where a logo or something like that doesn't matter. Yeah, or, there are. Yeah, what what are those? And I, I try to discourage people, or not discourage, but but get them to think about it. You know, do you really need a logo? Because logos are expensive. They're right. not they're not cheap. And but it seems like it, the common thing is everyone thinks they need a logo. It's like I need a logo. You know, but like real estate agents, I've had a lot of real estate agents come up to say, I need a logo. I was like, what? Well, I don't know if you really need a logo, but maybe you need. A brand, you right. know, make your your face and your colors into a brand that you use that in whatever you do, and that's that's something that we haven't touched on yet. But branding is huge, and I'm huge into branding. Just make sure you're consistent with branding, with colors, fonts, images, so that people recognize you in an instant, you know, wherever you are. Gotcha. So, um, how, when you're talking about branding and you're creating that, then. Is it similar to creating a logo where you you just throw at them here's sixteen different fonts and you pick one you like or or um, do you more or less just take that and run with it and because most people don't care uh, usually that's part of the logo like okay now that um, I've created the logo you've got the 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 font in your logo mm -hmm. but then here's another font that you could use along with that you know and but always stick to these fonts gotcha okay and for folks who don't have a logo obviously just Pick a font and just stick with that all the time. Keep yeah, the yeah. keep the message short and sweet and to the point, and use the same message, the same font, the same. Even though you have a logo, basically the same image all the time. Whether it's your photo and your tagline and in the font that makes sense, just use that repetitively over and over and over. Right. Yep. Okay. Anything else on branding that that you want to bring up? Mm, nope. Okay, moving on. Uh, <laughs> advertising. Anything on there? So you got BAM. You got uh, branding. <laughs> Advertising and marketing. Uh, advertising. Um, keep it simple. Yep. You know the there's the rule, kiss the kiss rule. Yep. Keep it simple, stupid. Um, there's the rule where all message is no message. I mean, if you have too much going on, and this just happened recently, uh, there was a, a mailer that somebody sent me, and they wanted it redone, and I looked at it, and I could not figure out what they were selling or what the name of the company was even because there was so much stuff on here <laughs> right you know this nascar thing and yeah. um 
So, you know, that's where I, I find just, that like, dentists and chiropractors and medical centers, their billboards are all like that. Like they got <laughs> a list of 73 services and you have to, you have to, the, the address and the phone number are in a smaller font than the list of services. And there's a picture of their building <laughs> without an address. And so if you, if you drive by that building, you might recognize it. But short, if you're like just moved in the area or you live in the other side of town and you don't recognize the building, you, you couldn't possibly find them. And I wonder, people get paid to do this stuff, right? They get paid to create this image now that is yes, useless. Yes, yeah. So how do people keep from doing that then? Well, well, uh, you just got to narrow it down to a simple message. Because if people get confused, they're not going to look at it. If it's, you know, and it was very confusing to me, to the eye. You know, I look at it, I was like, ah. And so I had to, you know, look at it, dissect it, break it down. And it's like, okay, we're going to chop out you know, more than 50% of this. Mm -hmm. And just so that when you look at it, you know right away who it's for, what it's for, and then you open it up and have some information in there. Right. So, yeah, just try to simplify. Right. Keep it simple, stupid. I like that. Yep. So this this podcast is all about small business and and things to help people be successful and, and uh, uh, keep folks from um, making mistakes other folks have made. You've been in business now three years, you said? Mm hmm You started out in a partnership that didn't, last until now that you went out on your own yep what uh in your own business aside from branding and marketing and things like that what um what can you look back on and say you know for somebody just starting out who's you know 18 months in or a year in here's some things i did that oh my god i'll never do i would never do it that way again or here's here's what are some examples of things that uh if i hadn't have done it this way i wouldn't be nearly as successful as i am now what 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 has your experience been like owning your own business well so I know my experience is totally different than yours because you've got great partners. Mm -hmm. um, somebody said once, and it really hit me, is that partnerships are sinking ships. That rang true for me. Right. I did not get lucky enough to have, you know, partners that we meshed really well with, that right. I meshed really well with. And um, so if you're going to go in business with partners, I would be very selective. Sure. Or lucky. Right. And... Uh, um, what else? Like, th but the great thing, you know, that the silver lining of, of what I went through was it taught me some business, taught me some, you know, things about business where I could actually run my own business. Cause at the time I was, I was the only one that didn't have any business experience. Cause I've always been the, the guy just creating stuff. Right. I never had to really run the business. And so going through that, I learned some things and was able to do it on my own, which has been great. But if you don't have that experience, I would say find a mentor right. that could actually help you out because starting up a business from scratch is pretty scary. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of, like you said, there's a lot of do's and don'ts. Um, another another cute saying I heard recently was the riches is in the niches. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was like, hard to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, but... And that's something that I tried out too. Is like, oh, I'm just going to do everything. I'm going to be right. the everything guy for everybody. I'm going to make everybody happy. You want this? Yeah, I got that. You know, sure. you know, sure, I can do it. And just a yes man. But that is so hard to be so spread out and try to be good at everything. Right. So there's things that you know I've kind of knocked off my list where you know you know I don't really I don't I you know I don't do that, but I can refer you to someone that does that. Sure. Yeah, no, you know? that makes sense. So. Um, We'll come back to that in a second. Going back to the, the partnership thing, um, for those listening, you've got two people here talking, one who had a terrible experience with partners, one who had a fantastic experience with partners. Um, from my perspective, what I see on this is it generally comes down to ego um, for, for the most part. Where I've seen partnerships fail or succeed is directly linked to the amount of ego that is present in the room. <laughs> the partners are there. In, in my experience, um, we're all super grateful and we're all pushing for success. But there's not ever been a time that I can recall where um, I went in and challenged one of my partners on a decision they made and said, you should have done it this way instead. Or they come into my world and say, you should have done it this way instead. We are very fortunate, and again, we didn't vet each other very well, other than knowing each other for ten or fifteen years, whatever it was before we started. We didn't, we didn't interview each other. We just said, "Hey, let's go start a business," and we just got really lucky. So, like, you know, let's let's get that out of the way. Um, but 
they they run segments of the business that I don't have any interest or involvement in. I run segments of our business they don't have any interest or involvement in. So in our in our world, you know, our our business is kind of split between the plumbing, which is the thing that our employees do for the most part, and everything else. And I'm the everything else guy. I don't I, I'm technically legally a certified plumber. Um, but you wouldn't want me to come to your house to fix anything. I haven't touched a pipe wrench in I don't know how many years now. Um, the closest thing I can operate to a plumbing tool is a shovel, <laughs> you know. Um, and, and if you need that. Well. Yeah, if you need that, I'm your guy, right? <laughs> yeah, it's expensive as hell to have me out, but I can do it. Um, but I, I do the accounting. I do a lot. Of, I do most of the sales. I do the legal stuff. I do the HR stuff. And, and they don't have any interest or, or desire to get involved in that. And I don't have any interest, frankly, in in, in – new versions of pressure reducing valves and things like that. that's not my that's not my thing so we are f- super fortunate that we have different interests and different focuses and so uh, when i say you know hey we're heading down this direction with uh whatever um and in fact it's funny that you're here when i say this the one area where we used to kind of get on each other's nerves was in the very beginning was on marketing because we made very poor marketing choices in the beginning um mostly because None of us knew it. The, the, my experience, I learned accounting working for a big company. I learned sales, doing sales for many years. I learned all this stuff through a company. But one thing I couldn't learn was marketing because they handled it in Memphis, Tennessee, and we worked in Seattle. All the decisions were made in, in Tennessee where the, the corporate headquarters was. So I had a vague understanding of it. But I, had no, I had no idea how to make it do what we wanted it to do and, and what the spend should be and all, you know, how all, I, it just, none of us knew. So we were completely relying on people who were selling us their products to tell us which direction to go. And each one was a giant cluster worse than the previous one. Uh, and so in five marketing campaigns, we never had a single campaign bring in enough revenue to pay for the campaign, let alone all the employees that went along with doing the work. And so that got really, we were, we were probably the closest on any topic on that because we were all trying to make a decision. We were all trying to make things happen and none of us knew what the hell we were doing. And it was very frustrating because we're, you know, hemorrhaging money paying for these campaigns that aren't working and that got very, very frustrating. So aside from that, we we not ever had that experience. So um, I think for, for folks listening, if you have a partnership, my recommendation would be pick your area of focus, stay out of the other person's way, trust them, acknowledge that this is their area. If you have suggestions, temper that, you know, maybe allow for meetings where those things are discussed. But once that meeting is over and outside of that arena, just keep your nose out of it kind of a thing. Would that, that, would that have solved some of the problems that you had in your, in your foray into partnerships? Hmm. Well, I think, we, I think we had some pretty big egos, like you said. Yeah. Um, I mean, Yes and no. I mean, there there wasn't really anybody that did what I did, so we we kept apart that way. But some of the decisions were a little – I wasn't quite sure about them. And that's where, you know, I, I wasn't as involved because I kind of, you know, deferred to them. Mm-hmm. But if I maybe if I got more involved, that would have helped. So, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's tough because, I mean, the people who are likely to start their own businesses are generally A-type personality folks. And I can't, I mean, I'm just, you know, just for, for laughs, picturing three of me <laughs> running a business instead of the partners I have that I'm very blessed to have, we would all kill each other. I'm not, I'm not even joking about that. <laughs> Two of us would be in prison for homicide. Uh, these, I can't imagine we're working together me. I just, it just and, and, you know, you can probably imagine working with three of you. I mean, yeah, it just, yeah. it, 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 we have to have that balance and strengths and personality and, and, um, you know, my partners, you know, Eric is like the sweetest guy I've ever met. You know, uh, Randy is super quick and super sharp at picking things up, things I'll never pick up on because that's just that's what he's good at. So um, I think, though, folks generally try to find people who are like-minded to come together and do things, which is absolutely the worst possible thing you can right, do is find right. somebody who's just like you just go start a business. I, yeah. I can't imagine what that would ever work. But um, And the next thing you were talking about was the, the niches. is in The riches are in the niches. I like that. I never heard that before. <laughs> um yeah, you can't you can't specialize in everything, and if you're going to be a heart surgeon, you're going to make a ton more money than being a general practitioner. If you're a doctor, right? Um, you know, in in most industries, you can kind of pick and choose things you you excel at, and you can charge a premium for because you're really good at that versus other things. Um, 
I think there's no question that 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 is something I would advise folks to do. Find thing, you know, find three to five things you're really good at. Stick with those three to five things. And if those three to five things don't have a big enough market to pay for it, then become really good at something else. Then maybe. Yeah. <laughs> or charge a lot more money because you're you're dealing with with neurosurgeons who have specific needs that you can you know sell one a month and make a million dollars and or something like that. But it might it might be a necessity when you're starting out to try everything out sure. to get to those niches. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. You, you don't know what you're good at until you try it, for sure. Right, right. And if you started out a business saying, I'm only going to work with real estate agents, or I'm only going to work, well, you know, like, so that's that's probably not going to. But once you, I mean, it shouldn't take you decades to figure out no, what you're good at. No. You should know within a few months or years what, what you're good at. Exactly. What uh, what other things have you had experience in that, that you would you would either call chalk up as a success or chalk up as a learning lesson that you could pass along? Um, well, you know, like some of the things I don't, I, I don't do any kind of web programming. I just, you know, that's just really not my side of the brain. I tried, you know, I took classes in it and found that, okay, I'm a creative, I'm not a programmer. Right. So I, I don't create websites. I mean, I will design websites and I've done it before where mm -hmm. I will lay out the whole look and feel of a website, but then I turn it over to somebody else to program. Right. So, um, I'm, I am not a accountant. Right. That was <laughs> the first thing I did was get a bookkeeper, um, who just helps me out monthly, you know, once a month, you know, reconciling, I do all the invoices and stuff, but I just do not like yeah. QuickBooks. Shocking. A creative type would not <laughs> want to be a bean counter on the side. Yeah. <laughs> so I was... I was more than happy to pass that off. Right, right, right. <laughs> Did, was was that something hard for you to do, or were you happy to just get it off your plate? Because a lot of folks, it's it's they don't want to acknowledge that a they don't like it, or b they're not good at good at it, or both. And um, you know, accounting specifically is kind of the 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 it's like the oxygen in the air we breathe when you're running a business. If you can't get the accounting right, nothing else really matters. So folks are super protective of that. I find that. They don't want to give this up because it hurts their pride or their ego or hurts their feelings or they wouldn't want to admit, I don't know what the hell I'm doing here, so I'm going to hand this to somebody else. Yeah. For you, was that easy to hand off or were you reluctant? Well, you know, I again, starting out, you have to do everything yourself. Yep. So I was learning it and I, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm doing it, but I really don't enjoy it and I, it's not like something that comes easy to me. Mm -hmm. Um, so we actually had a friend who was a bookkeeper and, um, she said, Hey, I can do this, you know, once a month, if you do the invoicing, uh, you know, and all that, then it's real easy for me to come in and just make sure that you're on track for the year. And it's like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Please, please, please take this. Yeah. <laughs> so no, it wasn't hard to hand off right. at all. <laughs> so recognizing your limitations much in the way I learned that I, I'm not a design person who can create <laughs> logos and put in nice colors and things like that. <laughs> um, handing off something you weren't good at and didn't like, pretty easy decision for you. Yep, yep. What 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 can you look back and say, man, if I could do anything over again, I would definitely not do it this the way I did it, besides the partnership thing? Uh, well, you know, there's nothing, nothing... I love what I do in my business. I really enjoy it. I... I um, so I can't think of one thing right now in my business that I would change. I mean, if I was going to go back. Right. Yeah. I don't mean where you're at today. I mean, yeah. something you did maybe six months in or one month in or 18 months in where you go, oh, geez, if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't do that. Well, I mean, I, what I'm going back to is like a corporate job. Right. You know, I was, I was kind of stuck. I was just, it was like, okay, it was, it was easy. Right. You know, and then I'm stuck in this thing. This was the waiter position in Hawaii? No, this was... <laughs> That was actually pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. So your your uh, your corporate job, you're stuck. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm commuting, but I've got you know a 401k, and I've got vacation, I've got sick leave. Hey, right. We'll just keep going year after year after year. Mm -hmm. But you know, it takes something like 2008 to throw you out on your butt, and you got to start new. Right. It was probably the best thing that could have happened to me. So, you know, if I would have followed my passion a little more, maybe early on. It might have might have been a good thing because I you know like I say I am really loving what I do right now. Right, I have a lot of freedom. And you can't put a price on that, right, Doug? You can't put a price <laughs> on that. 
So, but you have all this freedom. So you don't have the security of a 401k and you don't have the security of mandatory paid vacation every year, but you have freedom and you have the enjoyment of doing what you like to do. Yeah. Because I mean, even though I felt secure in a corporate job, well, I was put out on my butt, right? you know, so that's maybe a false security. Sure. Yeah. I think that that's true. I think all those things are false securities that, um, it feels good until it doesn't feel good. <laughs> By then, it's too late. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, aside from handing off things you don't like and you weren't good at, any other advice you would give folks that are, you know, so you're three years in? What advice would you give to somebody who's six months in or three months in or something like that? Are you talking about in general or? Yeah. yeah. I mean, not not another design person necessarily, but somebody who's left the the quote unquote security of a of a corporate gig. Is is you know branching on their own and and maybe they've hit that point three to six months in where they're going what the hell was I thinking this was the stupidest thing I ever did it's just not coming together the way I thought it would, which, at least for me that that didn't take three months for that to happen it happened pretty quickly on yeah um, but I hear that over and over from folks that they hit that kind of that first wall where they really go, man th- this might have been a big mistake what what would you say to folks that are kind of in that spot, um you know my the way I think about things is it's kind of the go big or go home. Mm-hmm. You know, you really have to put everything that you can into your business. You know, I, I'm, I'm always trying to figure out ways to market myself and be seen and, um, you know, get good feedback from people. And, you know, I'm always coming up with more, And this is me. I'm always coming up with more materials and things that I can do to show off my business. Right. You know, um, how that relates to other businesses, I'm not sure. But, you know, you, you you can't put up a sign you know, on a retail shop and then sit and twiddle your thumbs and wait for customers to show <laughs> right. up. Yeah, that, that was you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You got it. You really got to get out there and hustle and get in front of people. And, you know, and because I don't do any advertising, I'm all word of mouth. And, and you, you guys are pretty much the same. Right. You know, you got to get out in front of people and, and do a good job, good customer service mm-hmm. and get that word of mouth. Right. Gotcha. Well, Doug, I really appreciate you coming on today. Um, some great information on, on uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, how do folks get a hold of you? Uh, they can give me a call at two five three. This is my radio. This voice is your radio now. voice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> late night radio talk show. Right, right, right. Oh yeah, we didn't have any callers. We did not have any callers. <laughs> anyway, you're on top. Two, of it, man. <laughs> it's two five. Just, <laughs> if the design thing doesn't work out, overnight DJing is is definitely on the horizon for you. So if you'd like to get a hold of me, call me at two five three six seven eight. Nine five seven six, or check me out on my website <laughs> www.bamdesignco.com. Gotcha. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, and the creepy. <laughs> Sorry if I made you sweat a little. Well, it just you know, when you look in my eyes with that creepy voice, that didn't that didn't help. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, so, hey, Doug, thanks again for coming in. I really appreciate it. Again, folks, this podcast was brought to you by the South Sound Summit at southsoundbusinesssummit.com. Uh, if you like what you heard today and you're interested in sponsoring, which you may not have liked what you heard today after the creepy voice from Doug, but <laughs> if you did like what you heard today and you were interested in sponsoring this podcast, please contact me at brian at brianlharding.com. Uh, next week, we're going to have on Mac McDonald to talk about how he has built one of the most successful multi-level marketing businesses in the world, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Um, this podcast, and you may wonder why we're having a you know, multi-level marketing person on, which is not a traditional kind of a business thing. Um, but this this podcast next week will be all about overcoming adversity and influencing people. Uh, he literally has built one of the biggest biggest businesses in the world. And if you want to learn about success, you won't want to miss that one. So uh, tune in next week for Mac McDonald. That's all for today, folks. Thanks again for listening. Thank you, Doug, very much for coming in. I really appreciate it. Thank you, it. Brian. And uh, we'll talk to you all next week. <laughs>